In my artwork, I distill light and time, and in so doing, we discover the essence of place. Now, that's a bold claim. But this film will show you, through the making of this piece, Sassafras, how I do that. I think the first thing about this process is actually showing up and being on site and on location. So here I'm just simply sketching in, drawing the outlines of what will become the tree that's in front of me. Now I'm looking and observing. So this is only the very beginning of the process. Distilling light is really important. And we see nothing without light. Uh, without light, there's darkness. I'll talk about darkness in a minute, but what I'm doing here is, is just blocking in the differences between the light and the dark. I'm still using the tones of the place and establishing the forms that are in front of me. You'll notice this is a fairly low base painting. I'm actually sitting almost on the ground. And um, the tree is you know, very small. It's not very big. I'm sitting next to a giant right next to me. But what I'm doing is, is looking, observing. Now you're seeing this in really fast motion. And, and in a minute we're going to go on to some slow motion stuff. And you'll be able to see what's going on with the individual parts uh, as I approach this painting. You see here the, the canvas has had a couple of layers at this point in time and I'm actually doing some now work in the darkness. So the darkness is interesting because without dark you can't see light. Without shadows there is no light and light actually performs shadow. It sort of goes both ways. So all paintings you've got to actually put that space and detail into the shadow. Now, when you're sitting there, the shadows are dark, but they're not a void. They're not nothing. They contribute to the final contrast of this work brings. So one of the things about distilling light is to distill and understand uh, the dark and the shadows and the form and the tone that goes behind that. Uh, without that uh, deeper light, the, the light shining through in this forest won't show up. Uh, it's interesting though because light, when I'm painting, changes all the time. And this is a really important thing. A camera doesn't do shadow very well. A camera will capture the light in a fraction of a second and, and the photographer often has to take it back, the digital image or, or in the old days the film image, and actually manipulate it so you can actually see the details in the darks and the shadows. Now, as I'm sitting here and painting and as I'm defining the shadows within uh, the, the side, I've obviously uh, got the, the light as established by where I'm sitting. The light's to the, to the uh, northeast, and uh, this painting is painted in um, basically spring and autumn. Um, finished in autumn, but mainly com completed in spring. Now that means the light's all coming from a similar direction. It's an afternoon painting. All these things are really important. I can't work on a painting morning through the night. I actually ought to decide when to paint and, and how to work with that. So as I'm, I'm going across the top with my brush, I'm actually building uh, the layers in the texture of this tree. Now, as I said, a camera doesn't describe what the eyes see. And this is probably one of the really important things to understand. When you take a photo, it's as fake as if you painted it. Um, but it's a different sort of fake. It's a fake of a moment where one fraction of a fraction of a second, everything that could possibly be recorded on that, that I'm going to call digital here on that digital image, uh, has been recorded. And if it's not there, it's not there. 
Um, and that can be manipulated later on in fancy programs like Lightroom or Photoshop. Uh, but essentially, um, the camera isn't the eye. The eye isn't actually just the physical thing and the retina and how good that's operating and what it's seen physically and how old the eye is, if it's an older eye like mine or if it's got cataracts like Monet had. Uh, but the eye is just a fraction part. Actually, the processing center is, is your brain. And your brain focuses on what it sees and what it doesn't see. Now, the eye, different to the camera, though, is able to see a whole range of things within the deep darks and the bright lights at the one time. So in a camera, you may be used to the fact that you've got to change the aperture and the speed to get something that approximates what you see. And then the color's not necessarily what you thought you saw because the camera's putting in some color as well to, to, to do its averaging trick. But the eye's incredibly smart. It actually sees light and dark and shade. And it sees it in different parts and blends it together. The second thing about the eye, it's a focus machine. What you're interested in is what you'll see. And if you want to see detail, your eye will zoom you in on the details. If you're, you can, you're just lost. But interesting, the eye doesn't actually put all that detail in, in your image at the time. It doesn't just sort of go, oh, like a camera with a really high resolution. I'm going to show every pore all the time. It actually only shows what you're looking at at that moment and what interests you. Of course, you can fit your eye one side to the other of the landscape and you can see details and different details. And this is a real problem for painting on a location because you're distilling the light and the detail of that light over time that's moderated by how your eye sees things. So, so this is the, one of the things that... Uh, Someone who hasn't painted on location or hasn't painted just from a photograph doesn't necessarily see or understand that we see what our brain and our interest sends us to. Now, these fast motion sections are actually uh, around about 30, 40, 50 minutes condensed into uh, 30 seconds. Uh, camera does that really nicely. Uh, but it's not um, the pace that it's done at. So here we see the pace. Now, the second thing about distilling is that distilling takes time as well. So not only is there time committed to doing the painting, but the actual process of seeing and looking and going, well, what goes down and what doesn't go down, takes time and thinking. Now, I've edited it out from this sets of films of slow motion painting, if you like, where it's real time painting. A lot of the bits where nothing's happening. But what's really going on is that as I'm painting, you'll see me pause the brush and look and take some time and think, is that I'm looking the whole time. Not at where my brush is as much as what's out there on the sassafras in life. So I'm, I'm trying to distill the moment that is there. Now here I'm just putting on this highlights on this trunk of the light that's dappling through uh, and so I'm putting these highlights in and they have to sort of <coughs> sit on the actual texture on they're not just like a, a you know the light on the trunk isn't just a separate section it's actually lighter on the deeper dark so here I'm just about to do this little little delicate touches with the brush now this is multiplied thousands of times as I'm working on a painting like this. There's this moments where I'm, I'm looking and responding to what I'm seeing. Now, I've just changed up the brush to a small brush for this section and we're getting closer to the end of the painting with the small brush work. But I'm actually working on the, the leaves and the finer details. And one of the hassles uh, with rainforests is why they're very hard to paint is the tree ferns uh, have got amazing detail and you have to give some time and, and place to, to distill the light capturing on those two. Or it will look sort of fake and rushed and, 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 and not real. But
Take it. Artistic distillation is not just what you're seeing, it's also what you're feeling and it's how you feel, the sensitivity going to the fingers, to the brush. Now we've we'll just listened to a, a quiet session where I haven't talked and you hear the birds chatting, the birds in the background. And when you're on location, doing the whole painting on location, not taking it to the studio and then removing yourself from the place, you're actually responding to the feel of that rainforest and those birds that are around you, the ones that are in the distance, the, the slight rumble, that background rumble that's your creek, just a little bit further down the hill, and you're just really making noise. It's a whole place. And that's critical to distillation process of light and time something that brings to the artist a joy of being in that location and that feeds into the brush feeds into how the brush sticks on the painting how the eye is looking and what it's responding to now a lot of this thing is unconscious and subconscious and sometimes a bird will come into view and out again and what will happen a bit later you will really stop and pause and talk about that but being there is about being there for the duration, for the time. So it's not just about seeing and describing. There's another distillation of time going on. And it's the distillation of experience of the artist. So that is something that's very hard to quantify for myself my experiences are totally different to other people but i've been painting in location and on site plain air if you like for something like 50 years and that brings with it a long-term understanding of what i'm seeing and doing so in this work you're getting the full experience of those experiences it's not the first time i've sat in a rainforest neither is it the last time i'll sit in a desert to paint so that distillation of artistic decision making is really critical and this is the connoisseurship of the distillation process it's like the wine blender who knows the taste of a wine and what to add and what to change it's like the the whiskey maker who can tell the good from the bad, the, the subtle tones from the other. The process of seeing that's going on in making a work like this is incredibly complex. And it's because there's been distilled the artist's life and experience. There's the skill, the physicalness about knowing where the painting wants on the palette is. I don't have to think about those things. They're second nature. My brush goes, picks up, mixes, comes back, puts it on. But in the process, there's this whole decision-making thing going on. What to include, what not to include. How to put the brush down, whether it's fast and quick, one little line, or whether it's something that's very delicate and fine. That's the process of distillation. It's understanding the medium, the paint, the glazing. Don't think the camera got it. Could have bought it in the background. Flame, ah, uh, sorry, Pink Robin just came by. I put my paints down. But, um, 
pop through there, onto there, onto there, down to the ground, across to there, like I didn't exist. It was beautiful. Happy not to exist for a little robin like that. How to see and to describe. One of the things I'm doing right now is trying to make sure that when I paint the leaf litter, I don't do it mechanically. But I have nice, interesting and experimental line that together adds up to what a leaf fall or a litter fall on the bottom of a forest is like. One of the problems that painters do you is to fall it. under the trap of, of trying to paint every leaf and every grain of sand and every twig as it sits. And what happens is the artist tends to start to arrange these. They're not just sort of straight copying square for square, little bit for little bit. They start to arrange the leaf litter in a way that is different. Now, for me, this process you're seeing now is born of, of understanding some really interesting and strap people. We go back to the time lapse. Painting ferns is, is really difficult. It's one of those things that uh, is one of the major challenges of uh, painting in a rainforest. Here I am back at the leaf litter. One of the things with leaf litter is you've got to make it look like it's just fallen on the ground. But leaf litter is not just a simple bits. Uh, the leaf litter itself has got pattern and form. Uh, the different leaves are all similar shapes and sizes. The trees come, the twigs come from the same tree and therefore have the same shapes and forms. So the really important thing is to describe things in a way that uh, makes them look natural but a part of the process and the place. Notice how contemplatively light the brush is held and yet uh, it's like a dance, a tip twisted right gently in the fingers to, to create the forms and the shadows. And you look at this work at the beginning, you see it again at the end, you sort of think, wow, there's been a lot of detail. How does that detail come in? And that just comes from the interaction of the transparent layers one upon the other upon the other building up that. But it's not about a process of of super fine, everything's got to be painted. It's a, it's about the way that each layer dances on the surface and combines together. And the process of distillation is that, it's a dance. It's a dance of the environment and the medium and the artist together. It's a dance of the birds at sea, it's a dance of light on a trunk. Here I'm starting to put in the highlights of the green. It's only just beginning tentatively uh, describing where the, the moss tips are. These things all add together to distill the place. So as a rainforest, it's not just any rainforest, it's this rainforest in Lithuania. It could be almost any part of the rainforests around this northern part of Tasmania into the Tarkine and up to the edges of the snow country. Or I guess we're on the edge of the snow country here. But there's this dance of distillation, the describing. Now at this point in time we're 12, 15, 20 hours into the painting. And so the distillation of time and light, I think that's that mozzie I've got in. <laughs> You'll notice there's been mozzies around and they barely distract me. Uh, they don't tend to bite you in Tasmania, I love it. Um, but here we are, in the forest, living it out. Gently, carefully describing. Again, my eyes are looking and looking. And even when I'm painting these what look like random brushstrokes, my eyes are looking at the leaf litter and, and doing judgments between where and how and the colour and the light and what litters onto the ground. 
by the brush quickest as well. So fairly poetic in the thinking of that process, that lyrical space and line and energy. I have a saying which is really important. If I if I stop being energetic on a layer, I need to stop and pack up and go home and come back next time. It's really important that you don't get tied down. And if I find myself getting tied down, I would think about three films and the difficulty of describing those in an energetic way. I'll stop and move on to something else. Sometimes I use the leaf litter to clean my brush to, to get rid of the colour of the paint I've been working on and, and bring it down. And this, this harmonises as well because it, obviously the, the leaf litter has come from the tree as well. So there's this process of, of description going on. And it looks the most delicate brush in the mouth. The process of distillation is time. One of the secrets is to put the detail where it's needed and to not worry about where it's not. The eye is like that, the eye sees and then blurs the rest. If it didn't, if it saw absolutely everything in ultra HD, fine, hyper real space, the brain would probably fly. The processing power required of that would be too much for the brain. So the brain makes those decisions. So all of your life, you yourself with your eyes, you're distilling what you're seeing. You're going through the process of of describing it and keeping it and memory and you're putting some things in the memory and other things you forget. There are things like those gorillas that walk through the picture at the background. If you're not looking for them, you don't see them. Now the process of distilling for you on the canvas is for me to see and decide what you're going to see and what you're not going to see. To not bother giving you the detail you don't need. To not paint every leaf of the film. To not paint every piece of uh, litter on the ground, I mean, what I'm doing and describing, to do enough so that your brain actually paints in the rest. And that's one of the amazing things. Your brain will add detail where I don't. So you'll look at a work and go, wow, was that there? And then go back and say, actually, no, there's nothing there but the brush strokes. Perhaps I'll finish with this last thing. I was in an art gallery drawing a Caravaggio. And a Caravaggio is an amazingly realistic Baroque painter. Just incredible. And I'm drawing away at this major figure in this major painting. That's one of the Jesus scenes, having an argument, boy, the fisherman having an argument that he's the greatest, I think. And as I'm drawing, I realise that I'm trying to see the detail of the eye and I'm looking and there's nothing there. I thought the eye was there, but no, it's just a dark brown smudge like those dark brown pieces of this one. The artist didn't even paint in the ridge line. There's not a hint of an eyeball. There's not a fraction of a brush lash. And the artist has left it out because he didn't need to put it in. Because your face, your eyes, and facial recognition put behind them for you. So there's this Caravaggio, which is a major figure without an eye. The process of distillation is like this. It's putting down enough, leaving out other things. It's showing and highlighting, like here, the leaf the light that shines through the back of that leaf that makes it that really bright iridescent green and, and reduces the rest. This is a sassafras, you'll notice they've got little sharpy bits on the edge, even in these leaves that I'm painting. I don't put them all in. So toward the end I'm putting in little bits of those details. But these are, uh, if you like, really forward. I don't need them to be photographic detail. I just need them to be there in the sense of this forest. 
because you're not going to spend your time looking at these things, you're going to spend your time looking at that incredible core trunk of the tree as it sits in the body. So there we have the finished work. The distillation of light, the distillation of time, brought together to describe a central place. 